Hi everyone, I am Duango AC, Keeper of Taskbot, here with Freya Spirit. We are doing a wonderful run for you today. We have a run by Snick, S-N-I-Q, from taskvideos.org. You can find this run at testvideos.org slash 4010m.html. This is a 100% run of Super Metroid, and it is extraordinarily glitchy. I'm going to start the run in 3, 2, 1, go. So, uh, obviously I'm past the encoding, but this is the actual beginning of the run. Super Metroid has a wonderfully long intro scene. And... Um, Normally, speedrunners doing RTA runs are able to skip this, but tool-assisted speedruns start the run from power on. So we get to listen to this thing. So this is a great time to explain a couple of things that are happening. First of all, you might notice that you're seeing two copies of Super Metroid on stream, and the reason for this is the left-hand side is a exactly what you would see if you were playing this on a real console. The right-hand side is a graphics fixed version that cor corrects for several glitches that misplace the camera on the screen. And normally we would be trying to do everything with Taskbot over here on a real console, but this, this run is just too broken to show on a real console and there are way too many sync issues. So we're showing this this way because it's the best way to demonstrate what insanity is actually happening in the run. Uh, I'm gonna let Freya Spirit uh, introduce themselves and uh, they'll be doing the majority of the commentary. Hi, we are Freya's. Um, we're an experienced RTA runner and a tech aficionado in this game. Our favorite part about speedrunning, especially this game, is just learning how things work, learning the new tech, learning how to do it, understanding the game, breaking the game. And passes do that amazingly, so we are super excited to be bringing you this run today. Or are you commentating this run today? Just to make sure that it's uh, clear, uh, neither one of us are the authors of this run. This was done by the extraordinarily talented uh, Snick, SNIQ. Very, very fantastic TAS author. A lot of effort went into this run. I can't remember how many re-records, but it's some obscene number. 700,000. 700,000. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's... <laughs> Yes, 701,819 re-records. A re-record in a tool-assisted speedrun is where you're playing the game, you pause, you take a save state, you try something that you don't like, uh, you try something that doesn't go right, you back up and try again. Every time you back up and try again when using a tool-assisted speedrun techniques, it's called a re-record. And um, Snick re-recorded over 700,000 times in the making of this run. That's a really huge amount of effort. And you're going to see what's going on here shortly. Like, why that's so much effort. Yeah, 700,000 is the most we've ever seen. There's a few others, but not many. <laughs> that's a lot. We believe Snick put about 2,000 hours into this. So, this is a huge amount of work, all condensed into one hour for you. So, this is Series Station. Um... This is Ridley. There are two options here. You can hit Ridley a hundred times, or you can get damage down to below 30 HP. And it's faster to get damage down below 30 HP. So five hits from Ridley, and that'll be that. I always wondered about that technique when I saw real-time runners do it. Is there anything unusual about movement mechanics you're seeing here? So there's gonna so right there was um, a wall jump check to manipulate subpixel position to get an 87 through the door on the on-screen timer. Uh, why is 87 important? Because it's the highest you can get. Without that subpixel manipulation, you can only get an 86. Okay. And because it, because there's an on-screen timer, um, Tassers have spent a huge amount of time optimizing just the on series for the on-screen timer. And series is an incredibly, incredibly difficult section to optimize. And for, and for anybody who's new to tasking, or even to learning how to speedrun the game on a car, as, as a human, um, series is not a place that would be recommended to learn just because it's so complex. Yeah, it's at the beginning of the game, so it seems like the place you would want to start for a real-time run. But that also brings up a quick point. Uh, the tool-assisted speedrun techniques and strategies often are, and here's the uh, the encode showing the uh, re-record count and the playtime. 
Uh, oftentimes, tool assistant speedrun strategies are incorporated into real time runs. Yes. So the first thing you're going to see is Samus's arms flailing around. That that is boosting Samus's move speed by one pixel per frame. Here's going to be some un uncapped fall speed. You're going to see it hugely in the next room, where you're going to see some glitch. Gra the first instance of glitch graphics. On the right side is fixed graphics. On the left side, you're going to see glitch graphics. Very briefly. And that and that's a very minor case. But that was a trick called Boonfall, which just gi gives you uncapped fall speed. And that's something that's done RTA, saves about four seconds in that room. And the task is going to use that all over the place. Yeah. A lot of strategies are originally discovered in tool assisted speedrun uh, experiments and then incorporated into real time runs. And that's definitely <laughs> a wonderful thing about the synergy between the two. That was just a continuous wall jump off the door. That was pretty crazy. <laughs> So you see Samus and Spin Jump here. Um, you can pick it up from up to seven pixels away. So that allows you to pick up the item a little bit earlier. Is that what that was? I play Super Metroid. Uh, primarily was playing around with uh, Super Metroid Rando not long ago. Uh, I am not a an experienced speedrunner at this. I am a, a scrub tier, and that's okay. I am comfortable with this. Um, <laughs> but some of the techniques I'm seeing are blowing my mind. So you're going to see a double de-boost off the pirate's laser beams in this room. The top runners, humans, will do a single de-boost, but this is a double de-boost. So coming up here, you're going to see them jumping from platform to platform. While, while, crouch, while aiming down, Samus' hitbox is the most narrow, and Tass is able to use hitbox manipulation to grab each ledge as fast as possible. Not humanly possible at all. And you're going to see the first instance of a mock ball or a fast morph ball. That's a foundational trick that every human runner does all the time. So this is Bomb Torizo the first- oh! This is going to be Bomb Torizo skip! Ah, uh, yes. You have about half a frame of leeway with this trick, so it's very tight. Half a frame? What subpixel is it, apparently? There's collision oscillation in Super Metroid, where, where for, as a performance optimization, it only checks every other tile, every frame, ah. every tile, every other frame. So even if you do all the inputs correctly, you have a 50-50 chance of actually getting through the door. Because it might not interact. So that's probably the single tightest trick in the run. So you're seeing Slope Killer here, which preserves vertical movement speed. That's going to be used all, this, all the time. So coming up, there are two red doors back to back, each of which requires five missiles. Only, we only have five missiles total. So what they're going to do is they're going to shoot the five missiles at the door and farm up five missiles along the way. So this is a wonderful, wonderful tassel strat that drop, manipulates drops. Whoa. And just like that, we have full missiles going through the door. Wow. <laughs> so coming in here is early supers, which allows to skip a spore spawn. That is one of the core tricks that every new runner learns. Because it just saves so much time. Coming up is a task only trick. We're, we are gonna we're gonna do a moonfall, which gives you unlimited fall speed, and then we're gonna you're gonna see Samus twisting around, and all the while while Samus is turning, Samus's run to fall speed is going to be increasing, and and eventually it's gonna get high enough that we can just clip through the floor. There's a human equivalent um, for RBO that goes into the next room and does a little dance, but this is much faster. The task dance is much faster than the human dance. So, here we go. Clipping through the floor for early power bombs. All speed increasing. And there we go. Oh my gosh. Even the simple stuff of just the arm pumping alone is uh, it, it, just mind boggling. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, so arm pumping to early supers without needing to do a mock ball, that is probably your favorite task trick of all time. And we just blew our mind when we first saw it more than anything else. Probably back in 2005. I have to say, I did not move through this room nearly this fast. We have been informed that the world record holder for RBO, Shiny Zenny, has done this trick at, in practice before, which is super impressive. For a long time, the only time the way that people could do it in practice was in slow motion. So that power, that power bomb right there is going to clear the sound cue and make the door transition go a little bit faster. That's one that's going to be utilized many times. So right, coming up right now is going to be the early Brinstar cleanup. Normally you have to take a second trip through here because you don't get power bombs until later. But Snick is just going to clear all of these out right now. Power bombs required to get these and other power bombs. So coming up is a neat trick called Mission Impossible. For humans, it requires high jump. But you're gonna see you're gonna see some hitbox manipulation. Like right there, it does not look like you can actually land on there, but because you're because Samus's hitbox is so tiny when angling down, you land right on the pillar and you can jump right out. And this is um this is the wave gate. You're just gonna clip through the gate with a super. Yeah, I tried doing this in real time, and I know a lot of real time runners are really smooth at this, but this is surprisingly devilishly difficult when you're first starting out. And the test just makes it look like child's play. This makes everything look like child's play. Fair. So far, all the gra graphics have largely been behaving well, uh, but. You'll definitely see some occurrences uh, here where suddenly the left side screen will have glitch graphics, especially around pipes and whatnot. Yeah, so the thing that causes the glitch graphics is that if Samus is moving more than one tile per frame, the camera just can't keep up. And you're gonna and after we get speed boost here, you're gonna see plenty of that. So until we get speed booster, your graphics are density of picking up items in this 100% run is interesting. You hear the fanfare often. <laughs> How much time is taken up by the fanfare noise? I wonder. About 6.66 seconds. I meant total so multiply that by 100. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Actually, that's a lot. <laughs> so about 11 minutes. Of just this sound. <laughs> in a 63-minute run. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I hope you like that sound. <laughs> At the end credits, you'll be able to see the in-game time, and that is the amount of time spent actually controlling Samus. It's ridiculous. What's the human lowest time for in-game? Because I know it's one minute increments, right? Yeah, we don't actually know for Hundo Item. It's, it's, only, it's a very recent trend over the last 6 to 12 months that Hundo Item has actually been optimized. Before then, Hundo Item was always known as something which wasn't very optimized, and then Shiny Zenny came along and just ran Hundo Item as, as his main category, and that was that. So this X-Ray pickup is super important. X-Ray is an item which completely breaks the game for a task. So it would appear that the 100% item world record in-game time is 42 minutes. So we will keep an eye on what the actual final time is in the TAS. So you're going to see a lot of damage boosts. In this game, damage boosts actually send you across the screen very quickly. You're going to see one off the bat right here, or a bat particle. And just constant de-boosts. As we understand it, the, that cack spike right there is a common desync point. On task spot. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, for anyone just joining us uh, in, or just trying, tuning in, this is being done in an emulator uh, with video encoding to show a glitched version on the left and an unglitched version on the right. Uh, the game will start to get pretty broken in a little while, and it's basically the only way to properly show this run in all of its glory. So this one is not being played by Taskbot. Those missiles require power bombs, which is one of the main locations where having early power bombs is really important. To the point where it's actually ten frames or ten frames we'd estimate faster to get early power bombs in RTA if you can do everything else perfectly. Oh, that was disgustingly smooth. <laughs> okay, now that's just showboating. <laughs> So here's going to be the crate quick kill. They're going to shoot those to do lag reduction, and then they're going to take damage to make Samus flash for lag reduction, and they're going to shoot Kraid from as close as possible, all while keeping health above 30, which is a number for something called a health bomb, where you will only get health drops if your HP is below 30. Moonwalk is an in-game setting. In the options screen, you can just turn on Moonwalk, and then you can just moonwalk in the game. So, the human and Tass, or the human and old Tass route for any percent kills Fantoon first. But it's not possible, it's not viable to really kill Fantoon first because the, the wreck ship reserve tank requires a shine spark to get to, which means that you either have to get speed booster or spend a lot of time getting a shine spark using other methods. And it's just not very fast. So both TAS and both TAS and RTA hundo item do not kill Fantoon with, without speed booster. As a result, the hundo item TAS or the hundo item world record, human world record, kills the bosses in the natural order. Kraid, Fantoon, Dragon, Ridley. Some of the movement here is absolutely amazing. And by some of the movement, we mean all of it. <laughs> yes. You can just see how in how many places having early power bombs speeds everything up by just a little bit. So right now we are headed towards speed booster. And it turns out that Speed Booster and X-Ray in combination is one of the most broken combos in the game, and that's going to drive so much of the movement in the run. Snick is going to climb straight up. Snick is, so normally you need your iframes to run out before you can do a second de-boost. But in the next room, Snick is going to use a pseudo-screw attack to actually cancel iframes to get two de-boosts very close to each other. For any real-time runners watching this, I'm really sorry. There's so much going on, I can't even keep up. <laughs> Super fast mock balls and all kinds of stuff. And some of these damage boosts are hilariously complicated. Damage boosting in this game is a fascinating topic. Because you can, when you get hit, you can control whether you, you get knocked back high or knocked back low. And, how high, and the vertical position that you can start your de-boost on can be controlled by that. And in some places, you absolutely want to deboost de low, other times you want to deboost high. It's an adventure. So here we go. We have Speed Booster now, and that means that we are right on the edge of broken graphics everywhere.
This is definitely going to get a lot more fun. Good so far. That was so smooth. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, First broken graphics. Yeah, that's definitely broken. What happened there? By oh. x-raying on the frame, that... <laughs> I followed by something even more complicated. By hitting spikes and then x-raying in, the in the last frame of iframes, you can enter X mode, and that allows you to, and that allows you to um, spark. And if you spark while in X mode, it, then you can just gain a massive, massive vertical speed. And that massive vertical speed is what breaks it. So it seems to only be great breaking just the graphics. Collision does still work correctly. It would just be off screen if you were looking at it on the console, right? Yep. And when you're tasting, you have Lua scripts that show each block. So you can to absolutely see what's going on even if the graphics don't. So here we're so here um there are, normally there are crumble blocks which are one way back there. But we're gonna enter G mode. By taking, by triggering reserve tanks through the door and X, holding X-ray, and that is going to just cause those block, those crumble blocks to not spawn, and we can just walk all the way in, walk all, all the way through a back way, back door, a one-way passage. That definitely shows better than anything we've seen so far. Exactly how glitched the graphics can get, and why we show a dual encode like this. Otherwise, you'd have no idea where you even were. And now what we're going to see is lower Norfair in reverse. So coming up right here, you're going to see a really fun thing. They're going to mock. They're going to mock ball into into maintaining blue, and then going to jump, and use that to break the first two bomb blocks. So health is really no low right now. So in the next room, a super is going to be shot at one of the Funes, and that is going to get, give enough health for a D-boost. You'll watch the health management be very close in this room, just so all the D-boosts can be done before picking up the E-tank. And of course, the glitched version shows two E-tanks. So exiting exiting the spark by, by um, releasing X-ray gives you a blue suit. And that just one hit KOs almost all enemies that you can walk through. So you can just walk through enemies. The downside is that you cannot dash. So you have to be careful of when you use it. Like right now, it's just given up because he can't dash, and it's too, and that makes it slow. Oh, that damage! Metal is pirates so are going to be killed with three supers each, in a beautiful task way. Wow! And then, and then, a missile is going to shoot the door, and two rooms are going to be sparked through. Really smooth. So we're, we're going to see if you have charge beam, wave beam, and only, selected only and power bombs, and you hold charge for two seconds, you will get these four particles coming in. They are incredibly hard to control, so Ridley's, Ridley's positions are being very much so manipulated, and, the and Ridley's position is being even more manipulated to make sure that none of the particles hit the tail, because the tail will block the shots. Extraordinarily fast. Snick is very good at this game. Yeah, I'm noticing. E tank echoes, but that one's really broken. That short charge has been done by a couple humans only.
for a while there was there was a competition of who could actually get it first. Mm. Absolutely shared to everybody when when somebody actually got it. So here's a super jump. I'm gonna take a ton of speed and just spark all the way out, and and maintain the blue. So, without plasma, these key hunters are a massive pain to deal with. But with a blue suit, you, you can just run through them, or you can just spark all the way out. Acid dive right here. Oh, that was beautiful. Pretty dangerous to do, but not for Tass. And here's a one-way passage. You're going to see some crumble blocks after the after the missile pickup. And it is the, it's one of the crux of RTA runners. If you fall, you have to go all the way around in a big loop and your run's dead. Everybody's done it. Never makes anybody happy. Put the super missile through the gate. Perfect. Humanly doable. Yeah, but it's hard. I know, because I've tried. The, th the number of things that are human viable, but not easy enough to do consistently. <laughs> at, least, at least, well, I mean, I know a lot of runners can do that consistently, but some of the other things are not easy to do on a regular basis. So coming up here is a Golden Terizo fight. We are going to hit it all of, all of zero times and walk out of the room. We're going to see another super jump here to just clip the ceiling. And why bother doing the boss fight? Oh, fair, because the boss doesn't give any drops. The old, the old Golden Teresa skip involved doing a crystal flash clip through the ceiling. And believe it or not, this this current super jump is substantially more likely to be RTA viable, human viable than the old one. So that was lower nor fair. Time to clean up the rest of Norfair, and that was a single Norfair visit with everything grabbed. It is really smooth. So why such low health here? That looked like that looked like the, that was intentional to make the spark end a, fr a couple frames earlier. When you hit 29 health, your spark will end. And sometimes it's advantageous to end it a little bit earlier, time-wise. I see. The amount of ammo that Snick can sneak into Croc's mouth is ridiculous here. <laughs> And then you're going to see Snick do this charge shot, which is going to open the door on the left. Oh, and in the in the unfixed glitch... Yeah, in the unfixed glitch, you can actually see the door, too. Unfixed graphics, I should say. Ooh. That one's actually very RTA viable. You just stand on the right pixel, charge a shot, and shoot it angled down. Still, that is showing up. <laughs> so this is going to be charging a spike suit. You can't see it, but Samus actually has a Shine Spark charged. Human runners do do this, and for human runners, they try and save it for ec up to X-Ray. Oh, I see. <laughs> I, I did not go that fast. Snick is going to use it just to spark across here. One of the nice things about the X mode shine sparks is that you can actually end your sparks without needing the shine spark crash animation, which is about 70 frames. 
If you look back at the old human runs, for example, Red Scarlet's 100% run from 2004, you'll notice that she shine sparks everywhere. And, and it looks absolutely beautiful and amazing. Unfortunately, the shine spark animation is so long that it's just slower in a lot of places. And as people have optimized it more and more with practice ROM, a lot of shine sparks have just been cut out. If it ever becomes RTA viable to shine spark without a crash animation, there'll be shine sparks all over the place. <laughs> That was some that was impressive a grappling ceiling? skills. The way that Snake uses grapple is absolutely amazing. You'll see extensive use of that use of that in the wreck ship. There's a lot to keep track of. So that was a good optimization there of shooting it, grabbing the missile so that it's open by the time you get through it. And you can preserve momentum. Yep, that is absolutely expected of human runners too. Yeah, it's just incredible watching it being done absolutely perfect. <laughs> This escape is absolutely amazing. Interesting. And with ice cream here, this is the very last item of Norfair. And we'll be heading straight to the wreck ship. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> the continuous wall jumps everywhere are <laughs> ridiculous. The wreck ship is probably our favorite part of the run. So this is the ice escape. We're gonna mock ball out of here. Only Snake does it super fast. Oh, and who needs an elevator to escape from LN? Whoa! We need to spark all the way up instead. Is that human viable? We believe somebody might be able to get it in the practice realm if they do enough work. That was pretty wild. What? Um, what just happened? <laughs> Flip the ceiling to grab space air early. You can do that? Six been clipping through all sorts of ceilings everywhere. <laughs> and the clips get and the clips get even wilder and wilder. <laughs> this run is crazy. So here's a trick called a suit short charge. You can charge a shine spark in a very short amount of space. Hum humans charge in a short amount of space. Tash charges in an absolutely ridiculous amount of space. Normally, you need about three full screens in order to charge a shine spark, be able to charge a shine spark. But you can do it in a single screen with good enough taps. Samus has um Samus has a P meter that goes from zero to four, and at four, Samus can charge a, a shine spark and fly. So tapping all these spikes is necessary to enter X mode and to be able to do these super jumps. So taking, so hitting the spikes there is incredibly intentional. Okay. This is definitely a blink and you miss it. This run has so much stuff going on that you can't really look away for very long. There's another elevator skip. Ocean fly here. This is a very famous 
seven, 17 year old trick at this point that yep. humans have humans have been doing this for 17 years just sparking all the way across here still looks amazing always amazing so normally there's a pack of missiles that you grab on the left before the wreck ship is on but it turns out that you can actually do damage boost to make it faster to get grab it when it's on so this is going to be a super short charge to get blue to break these speed blocks and as you exit Fantoon, it's going to be the shortest charge of all. So normally if you hit Fantoon with a super missile, Fantoon will be, become enraged and become unda undamageable for about 17 seconds. But if you hit Fantoon on the frame before Fantoon starts to move, then you can just... the enrage doesn't check. And it's really important to note that Snick went into that fight with only a single super, so Snick manipulated a super draw to get us to get two supers for the fight from the flames. And here's going to be the shortest of all short charges right here. Wow. That short charge is completely not RTA viable. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> all right, so this there's some parts of this one that are your favorite coming up. What's about to happen? Because it's probably going to happen too quickly. So you've seen damage boosts all over the place. One of the really neat things is Wreckship went on is damaged, so it has a bunch of sparks everywhere, and you can actually grapple those and do damage boosts, boosts off of those spikes. So you're going to see a lot of that. There you go, there's the first one. And coming up is a spiky room of death. Or Tass will not die to death. And look at that. Faster faster with the ship turns on because you actually want the spikes make you go faster for Tass. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, my jaw keeps falling lower and lower. <laughs> So here, here's going to be, um, you need to take damage for, to actually do a super jump. And in that case, they actually use grapple on a spark to take the damage, initiate the damage for it. This segment that we're in right now is absolutely our favorite part of the run. And you're going to see some, you're going to see more of that using the grapple on sparks to initiate damage boosts right here. Oh gosh, that was perfect. And, and here's going to be the wreck ship attic. At the top of the wreck ship, you're just going to... When Samus is blue with speed echoes, Samus basically one-hit KOs every enemy in the game. Every enemy that's vulnerable. And you're just going to see it chained together in a beautiful, beautiful way. Don't blink. What? what? <laughs> She's through the whole room. Okay. And, and here's four sparks that are going to be grappled on. It's absolutely gorgeous use of grapple. Um, you can know nothing about this game and know that this room right here that just got cleared with the blue effect was cleared ridiculously fast. Well, so that was perfect. And that was perfect. <laughs> This is interesting approaching it from the perspective of I have tried to play this game fast, but I'm very, very naive and novice at it. But I well know task mechanics, so I know what things are possible, and yet my brain can't quite absorb everything that I'm seeing. <laughs> because my game playing experience tells me what I am seeing is not possible. <laughs> As a runner, it's still very hard to absorb. So coming up is a 30 second unskippable cutscene. Bowling. You said unskippable, right? Unskippable. Or not. Okay. So what just happened was Snick used, Snick used uncapped fall speed just clip through, the, clip through the floor. I would also note that the graphics on the left are so incredibly glitched at this point, it's not even funny. Yeah. <laughs> 
It makes more sense seeing the fixed graphics, but... Ah. Uh. <laughs> As somebody who's put 2,000 hours into running this game, we still need the fixed graphics. Be because even though we can, like, conceptualize what's going on because we have the entire game memorized, having the fixed graphics still helps a lot. So, at the top of at the top of Meridia, at the top of the Red Tower, in the Red Tower elevator room, is a green gate that is normally one way, and it was the crux of Tassing for a long time. They found out how to break it in PAL a long time ago, but there's just not enough speed to actually open it with supers. But they did come up with the tech here. This is G-Mode, the same thing that you used saw to clip into Lower Norfair, reversed. And the trick to get past this green gate is to just completely despawn it. Right now, post-load modifications do not load, and that's just going to make the gate not there at all. And you can see when X-Ray ends where the gate was supposed to be. And this allows for entering Meridia from reverse. Kind of one of the holy grails of Tassing, and amazing that it's finally done. Even more amazing that when it was finally done, it's done in a way that is RTA viable. That was very clean. Entering G-Mode is incredibly slow, but conceptually very easy to execute. You just, you, you have yourself a very low HP with some reserve tanks, X-Ray targeted, and then you get, and then you get, have an enemy knock you back through a door, and you just hold down X-Ray through the door, and that's it. Very easy to execute once with enough tries. It actually makes sense, but that is definitely a unique bug. Whoa, that's a new angle of getting that one. Do your reserve tanks have to be full? No. They just have to exist. They just have to exist. Interesting. And the most fun thing that that allows is morph without morph. We should note that those that, that super missile pack that was just picked up, a bunch of tiles were clipped through for that. Normally you're supposed to enter from the other room. I always found this area to be ridiculously slow to move through. Uh, this does not look slow to me. This is one of the hardest areas for RTA runners to optimize. Understandable. Ten minutes of that ditty is kind of amusing to me. <laughs> there is a version of this where um, all frames where the in-game clock isn't ticking up are removed, and it looks amazing. So door transitions that. are removed, fanfares are removed, and it's just so fast. How you wish the game had been written. <laughs> Okay, that was fun. What just happened there? It was the same trick that we used to skip bowling, just using grapple beam to clip through, the, gain vertical ball speed to clip through the floor. Faster than go, slightly faster than going all the way around the rim. I see. So these sand pits are kind of a pain for routing. Normally, the normally the way that humans do it for the route, which has almost entirely stayed the same for the last 17 years, is you kill Dragon, and then you come down the sand pit. This is a very unique pass route right here. So this ice clip right here is very RTA doable, and every world record run does it. Taking a little bit of damage and being in morph while the power bomb goes off just for lag reduction. Our bombs are incredibly, incredibly laggy because ovals. I love how he's filling the time. 
<laughs> Seeing that Shine Spark there almost terrifies us a bit because the Shine Spark, the Speed Echoes can kill Shack Tool, which means you have to reset the room. Which is not great for a 45 second cutscene. No. So that snail is going to break the blocks early. Oh. Humanly doable. Makes sense though. Wow, those were really clean. That actually does bomb jumps differently from humans. You can you can lay the bomb job bombs a frame earlier if if um if you can actually time moving right into it. Which is way too risky for humans. So now there's a there, now there's a safe spark and it's gonna be used right here. So coming up here is an interesting, interesting trick. Normally you're supposed to have kill Dragon before you can enter Plasma, and there's a metal door that you just can't get through. But it turns out that with enough vertical speed you can just clip through whatever you want. <laughs> well that works. Having the Plasma Beam early will make the Dragon fight substantially faster. There's also a mini boss called Bot Wound well known for having the worst hitbox in the game, but you're going to see in a second a, a little trick that just allows you to completely skip bot lane. That was clean. That plasma room is one of the worst rooms in the game for humans. Yeah. It's, it was very painful when I went through it. So we're going to exit the bottom through the bottom door by going to the top right. What? Okay. There, there's an unused door in the room that uses the same thing. Okay, so we're gonna freeze that there, and then do a wall jump check on it, which allows us through the door. Uh, okay. If you say so. There's an old category called No Boss Mini Boss, where you try and pick up as many items without killing bosses or mini bosses. But unfortunately, that trick right there is theoretically human viable. Which means that nobody wants to touch the category. Uh huh. Yeah, I can understand that. So coming up, plasma is a beam. Plasma has a unique property of piercing enemies, and you're not supposed to have plasma by this part into the game. So they didn't. So they didn't actually make plasma not pierce straight on. You can combine that with the fact if you just shoot a plasma beam through Dragon. By the time Dragon will have iframes by the time the beam is gone. But while you're X-raying, the game freezes, but iframes continue to tick down. So you're gonna to to see something known as a microwave beam. Where Dragon is just gonna be hit many times very quickly. Oh wow. Okay, that was it. Um can you explain iframes really quick? Yeah, so there's invincibility frames. Every, in almost all games, after you take damage or after an enemy takes damage, they can't take damage for another while. And this is just working, or getting around them. And now we have space jump, which allows us to just jump repeatedly. Which, it's not like it's slowing us down much. <laughs> Works quite well underwater. Very much so hated by the community out of water. Considered to be the worst item in the game by many. Why? Because in in water, it mostly works as expected. Like, you can just mash the jump button and repeatedly get jumps. Mm -hmm. Out of water, you need to be falling for at least 22 frames before you can actually jump again. Ah, so that it's because of the timing of it. It creates this really awkward window. So here's going to be another super jump. And we're going to get these supers and missiles in reverse. A really neat thing is that we have a blue suit now. So we're just going to do a moonfall. And break all those blocks right there. And break all those speed blocks on the left. Okay. Really interesting exit.
Oh boy, definitely some glitches on the left. Your force definitely did not intend for people to be traveling a tile per frame. Normally shine sparks cap at 15 pixels per frame, which is slightly less than a 16 pixel tile. This Meridia exit is amazing. So you're going to see some space jumps into the door being shot, into a mock ball, into some spring ball jumps. It's absolutely beautiful. All while maintaining the run speed. Alrighty. And never breaking the glass either. Nope. And here's some more spring ball jumps. This one is human viable. <laughs> that still looks nice though. So coming up is a trick called the Reverse Slinky. It's one of the biggest memes in the community. There was once a highlight video which showed a human runner just doing this in slow motion for the memes. That's one of the tricks that humans will just try and, for practice, try and practice for like three hours and get it once and show it off. Yeah. So if you haven't noticed yet, the more run speed you have, the higher you jump. And that's going to be used to at full run speed. Just jump, uh, jump all the way up here in ball. That was a long way. But... Okay. I just learned something new. I didn't know you could go through those blocks that way. Humans definitely do that. Yes. I figured they did and I just never noticed. So this is the final cleanup. We're going to start cleanup. It's just going to be done at an amazing speed. All the items combined, it's definitely a lot of uh, tools in the toolbox, as it were. This is one of the reasons why Hundo Item is so difficult for him. The more movement items you have, the harder it is to optimize. Why did low percent was walking in something. At a high level, low percent is a pretty mundane category because the movement is just so simple to optimize. There was once a top runner who static nine who declared that he was just going to that he ran, ran low percent because he wanted something relaxed to do okay that looked very very strange power bomb placement is amazing The spring ball usage. Spring ball is one of the best items in the game. It unlocks so much movement potential. And probably very hard to control for real time. <laughs> I know this is a really straightforward strategy, but it's... No, that is not straightforward at all. That was multiple CWJs, which, <laughs> which allowed Snick to jump faster than the space jump timer would normally allow. That was an incredibly technical room that's not human viable at all. I believe it. Look, we actually got to see a Shine Spark crash animation. <laughs> For the first time in a while. And that blue was gotten through a speed keep. If you if you unmorph on the if you unmorph on the right if you hit a spike at a ball and unmorph on the right frame, you can actually just can keep your run speed. In the gauntlet, there are two more missile packs and an E-Tank, and that is everything.
No, sorry, there's Kateria power bombs too. Speaking of power bombs, I'd like to specifically highlight exactly how careful resource usage has been throughout this run. Of oftentimes collecting items directly before needing them, cutting things ridiculously close, manipulating item drops from enemies perfectly. <laughs> this is every speedrunner's dream of having everything line up awesome. <laughs> yeah, ta Tasher's absolutely right scripts, which simulate drop, which simulate drops. So they can get get the ideal drops. So this is a beautiful, beautiful trick. Snick is just gonna spring ball straight through this. Oh. Absolutely amazing. You could do that. Okay, so because it's blue. Alright, that was oh my gosh. <laughs> and, and here's gonna be the back half of Gauntlet Spark, the Samus Expert Master. Very difficult to do RTA because you have to charge become blue at just the right at just the right place. Where you can break the halfway halfway between tiles, so you can break one and not fall. And here we are, the hundredth fanfare. We have every single item in the game. We are ready to kill Mother Brain and blow up a planet. All right, but oh, here's the trick. Stop us now. Here's a little moonfall to get unfall to get a bunch of fall speed. Uh, yeah, clearly. This part just has to be waited on. <laughs> this is a nice chance for Snick to show off whatever he wants to. Yeah, since there's time. <laughs> and waste missiles, because why not? Why not when you can show off the resource management even more beautifully? At this point, he almost certainly knew exactly, down to the missile count, exactly how many he would need. So he knew he needed 14, I'm sure. <laughs> These metro rooms are absolutely beautiful. Just what? Don't blink, watch, and just let your draw drop. Well, that was nice. Uh, okay. Best room in the run. Or the best room in these Metroid rooms. Whew. I feel sorry for the Metroids. <clears throat> so coming up is a baby skip that's gonna that's gonna be a one jump baby skip. It's gonna be grabbing run speed, shooting, going into morph, and then spring ball jumping through. One of the tricks that we're sure world record contenders must hate because they do have to go for that for the world record Oy. i would not want to try that there's a trick called zebatite skip this is another foundational trick that every beginner learns because in any percent each of those zebatites costs a ton of ammo to shoot and this trick just allows you to go through that save so much ammo, which just saves so many ammo pickups. It's a super important run for... super important trick. So 20 charge shots will do it here. Pretty glitched graphics. Ooh. And then you see a trick called stand up. Normally, d during the cutscene here, you're stuck on the ground and just waiting. But with, with the stand up glitch, you can actually start shooting Mother Brain and damaging her down. Which for Tass is going to mean that Mother Brain 3 is only going to 
it's only going to take one shot. So Mother Brain does not- it ignores iframes, which means that you can just constantly take damage. Which is a sad way for it to actually lose runs. But it means that for Tass, Stick can just show off, taking off a huge amount of health very quickly. Uh, that looks fun. Quite fun. So there we go. That's when that's when Mother Brain can start being damaged. And Stick is going to do 39 shots here, and then one rain rainbow beam shot at the very end. One of the really cool things about having Moonwalk enabled is that you can move backwards without without losing charge shot time. Normally, when you're charging a shot. When, you're when you turn around while charging a shot, you don't actually continue charging during the turnaround animation. So moonwalking... Moonwalking was probably worthwhile even without any of the glitches for Tassas. And then one shot to go, and that'll be that. Alright. What, what is in store for us for escape? There, there's going to be one more super jump into an amazing, amazing climb escape. Person, where we're just going to be an infinite grapple jump sort of deal. Where morph it, morphing and unmorphing is just going to preserve momentum. As always. We want to avoid any Shine Spark crash animations. So Spark is going to be charged here. That's just going to set us up for a super fast climb. Yeah, I'll say so. And just don't blink. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, is any of that even remotely human viable? Probably not. That ah. has been 100% Super Metroid. Amazing, amazing task. Yeah, my jaw is 700,000 re-records to bring me this. Uh, of course, the animals were not saved because that would take time. But uh, that was the run. It, the total run time in real time was 1 hour, 1 minute, and 47 seconds. 47.03 seconds, to be very specific. Um, frame count is 222,788 frames, uh, and as noted, re-record count, 708, uh, 7, 701,819 re-records, going back and trying again. We are, of course, going to play through to see at least what the completion rate was. This is a clear time, 31. So the human record is 42, I believe. Thank you for watching. I have been Duango AC, and with me has been... We have been Spray Spirit. And uh, we're very, very thankful to share this run with you. We'll let this go through to the credits. I don't know as if this is going to be shown, but uh, I'll leave it in anyway. One really neat statistic is with that timing, so only very slightly over 50% of the run was Samus actually being controlled. That is kind of nuts. I would like to look up that, that uh, encode that cheats and pulls out any frame where there's no control. That does sound very interesting. It's amazing. So for Dwingo and everybody in chat, make sure to get your gear forces ready. Mm-hmm. I'm not really sure what I will do. Uh, what I'm supposed to do. What is canonically... What are you supposed to do at this point? During the... At the end of the credits, it shows the development team named Deer Force. And you'll give a loud Deer Force. Okay. I, I, I'm not going to do it too loud, but we'll, 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 we'll come up with something. 
I certainly have seen more than one GDQ run end with people yelling that. You're going to get the 12.15 a.m. version of it. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> This game had so much effort put into it when it was made. I know that it's broken to smithereens, but the fact that the game holds up and doesn't fall apart and doesn't crash is still amazing. Now, there's plenty of ways to crash the game, or soft lock it, or other things, but it's astounding it works as well as it does. Surprisingly few ways to crash the game. At least without going out of bounds. Here we go. Dear Force. Dear Force. I'm a little slow. Um. <laughs> and there you go, 100% item collection. What you expected, your rate for collecting items is 100% in 31 minutes. Thank you so much for watching. This has been wonderful to be able to bring you this.